Hi, my name is Ibrahim Francis and this is the JNCIA course for Router Coach. Now, a lot of people have asked me, what's the difference between the JNCIA, which is the Juniper Network Certification Program, and the CCNA, which is the Cisco Network Certification Program. And what I usually advise my students is that they should do the CCNA first because it covers such a broad base of knowledge that when you come to the Juniper examination, even though it's a different vendor and different syntax on the command line, the knowledge from the CCNA will definitely benefit you if you're doing the JNCIA. And with the JNCIA, this course is called the JNCIA Junos. And this will stand you instead if you wanted to do like enterprise routing and switching. And I'll put these on the screen. So this path will help you for enterprise routing and switching and service provider routing and switching. It will also help you for the, if you're going along the data center track, because as it currently stands, one of the prerequisites for the data center is JNCIS ENT, which is the enterprise routing and switching track. And I would advise if that's the path you're going to do, do that as soon as possible, because it looks like they're going to change that to the JNCIS data center as a prerequisite if you wanted to go up to the JNCIP data center. All right, enough said about that. Let's jump straight in. So we're going to be looking at the JNCIA Junos and Junos OS, which is the Juniper operating system. It runs on all Juniper network devices, including both routers and switches. Now, the Junos operating system itself is separated into multiple software processes where each process runs in its own protected memory space and each process handles a different part of the device's functionality. But what does that actually mean? So just to clear this up a bit, on any network device, there are software processes necessary to like run different services. Maybe you need to control and configure interfaces. Well, you're gonna need a software process for that. What about routing protocols? You need a software process. What about configuring things like system management for the box? I'm talking about things like NTP, SSH, Townnet. And yes, you guessed it, they need a software process. Now on some platforms, if one of these processes fails, then the whole device freezes, but not with Junos. Because each process runs in its own protected memory space. If one of the processes fails, then it doesn't have to mean that the device freezes or fails. And also by adding additional processes, there's a um, less likelihood of disrupting the current running process. Oh, let's take a brief look at some of these processes. There's the initialization process in it. This starts and monitors all the other software processes. If a software process fails, the init process attempts to restart it a limited number of times and logs any failures. Then you have the management process, the MGD. The management process manages the configuration of the router and all user commands and is responsible for notifying other processes when a new configuration is committed. You have the interface process. The interface process lets you control the physical and logical interfaces. And then you have the routing protocol process, the RPD. This D stands for a daemon, but I'm just going to call it a process. So the routing protocol process controls the routing protocols that run on the device. It handles all routing messages, maintains routing tables, determining active routes to each destination, installing them into the routing engine's forwarding table. And the routing process, the RPD, also implements routing policy. Another one I'm going to cover is the chassis process, which is chassis D. This enables you to configure and control the properties of the device. This includes monitoring the health of hardware, including monitoring the temperature of the system, as well as fan speed and managing a database of what hardware is plugged in, like what line cards are plugged in or SFPs, etc. Junos devices separate the control plane and the forwarding plane. The processes that control routing and switching protocols are separated from the processes that forward frames, packets, or both through the device. But what does that actually mean? There are two bits of hardware on most Junos devices. You have the routing engine and the packet forwarding engine. Now, usually the routing engine and PFE sit on the same device, but they're two separate pieces of hardware. You can think of them as two separate line cards within the same device. And the routing engine acts as the intelligent piece of the platform, the, the brain, if you like, responsible for maintaining the routing tables and forwarding tables of the device. Whereas the 
Packet forwarding engine is the muscles of the device, responsible for forwarding transit traffic through the device. So let us first take a look at the routing engine. As we said previously, we know that the routing engine is responsible for maintaining the routing tables and forwarding tables of the device. But we also need to know that the routing engine is in charge of the processes that control the device's interfaces, its system management and user access to device. Meaning that when you use the Juno CLI or even like the JWeb GUI, you are sending instructions to the routing engine. The routing engine connects to the packet forwarding engine, which we're going to say, we're going to call it the PFE from now on, through an internal link and controls the PFE by sending up to date layer two and layer three forwarding tables. Now, when it comes to the PFE, this is the main part of the forwarding plane, sometimes called the data plane and is responsible for forwarding transit traffic through the device. Many Junos devices have specialized ASICs and this is going to help them to increase throughput, processing and performance and as the main processing of protocols and forwarded tables is handled by the routing engine then the PFE can simply perform as it's instructed. Now the PFE is going to receive a copy of the forwarding table from the routing engine and it's going to store that locally and what that's going to do is it doesn't have to refer back to the routing engine every time it wants to forward a packet it just looks at its own local forwarding table and can forward the packet as soon as it receives it. It also enables it to continue forwarding if something was to happen to the routing engine. Alongside forwarding traffic, the PFE is responsible for policers that provide rate limiting, stateless firewall filters and the class of service. Now I'm going to repeat that because it sounds like an exam question. I'm not sure, but it just sounds like something that would come up in the exam. So alongside forwarding traffic, the PFE is also responsible for policers that provide rate limiting, stateless firewall filters, and class of service. Next, we're going to take a look at transit traffic. Transit traffic is any traffic that comes into a, the device on an interface and goes out the device on another interface. So let me give you an example. We have PCA and it wants to communicate with PCB on the other side. So the traffic coming from PCA will come into the interface through the device, which is transiting the device and out the other interface going towards PCB. And it can be unicast or multicast traffic. And obviously if it's unicast traffic, it comes in one interface and goes out one interface. And if it's multicast traffic, it comes in one interface and it could go out through multiple interfaces. Now, because the PFE has a copy of the forwarding table, it doesn't need to consult the routing engine to perform this. So in an exam, if they were to ask me, how is transit traffic processed, I'm going to say the packet forwarding engine deals with transit traffic. So we know that transit traffic passes through the device and is handled by the PFE. But unlike transit traffic, exception traffic is traffic that is destined for the local device and it needs some sort of special handling and is usually sent up to the routing engine. This can be like routing table and routing protocol updates that need to be processed by the routing engine. We should be thinking of things like OSPF, ISIS or RIP updates. Also, it can be system service traffic like Telnet, NTP or SSH. Exception traffic destined for the RE is sent over the connected internal link and this exception traffic is rate limited to protect the routing engine from denial of service attacks. But this inbuilt rate limiter is not configurable. However, an exception to the exception traffic is ICMP traffic, which will state a destination unreachable message if there's no entry in the forwarding table. Let me give you an example. If PCA is trying to ping a non-existent IP address which the PFE doesn't have in its routing table, the PFE is intelligent enough not to send this up to the routing engine because this is not transit traffic passing through the device and there's no outgoing interface in the forwarding table to send the traffic out of. So the PFE can reply back to the source with a destination unreachable ping message. So we're going to do a question and answer session on section one now. Which of the following are Junos processes? Question number two. What of the following can be said about the internal link between the RE and the PFE? Choose two.
Question number three. What is responsible for polices that provide rate limiting, stateless firewalls and class of service? Question number four. If a system process was to go corrupt on the device, what protection considerations, if any, are in place? Question number five. Select true or false to the following statement. Transit traffic is classified as any traffic entering one interface on the device and exiting a different interface for a remote destination. Question 6. PCA sends a ping to a device with no destination entry in the forwarding table. What will the Junos device do? Question 7. Which of the following would be classified as exception traffic? Question 8. Junos devices separate the control plane and the data plane. Which of the following statements are correct? Choose two. <laughs> 